You know, one of the things I've been talking about here on the Midas Touch Network that I thought was not addressed yet was that after the uh, ruling by Justice Ngoron finding Donald Trump liable as well as Eric Don Jr. and others for $464 million in total for their fraud over a significant period of time, that order predated the plea agreement by Trump's former chief financial officer, Alan Weisselberg, who pled guilty to felony perjury in that very proceeding in the New York Attorney General's civil fraud case. And so the key witness for the Trump organization, Weisselberg, quite literally turned the courtroom where the case filed by New York Attorney General Letitia James against Donald Trump turned the courtroom into an actual crime scene, a felony crime scene, and engaged in criminal activity during the pendency of the case. And Justice Ngoron, you'll recall, before he actually issued his order uh, in February, he requested that Alina Haba and others in, in the Trump org representing the Trump organization provide him with knowledge about potential plea negotiations because it was reported in the New York Times that um, Weisselberg had been negotiating a plea deal. And they refused to provide answers. They attacked Justice Ngoron. So when Ngoron issued his 92-page order, the order itself did not include anything about the fact that the main witness was a felon. And by the way, what we knew he was a felon prior because in the tax fraud case, he pled guilty to fraud, but a felon related to this specific case. And by the way, that was one of the things that frustrated me so much about what the appellate division did when they reduced Donald Trump's bond obligation from $464 million to $175 million, which Donald Trump is still apparently incapable of uh, making a deal with a surety who can actually be valid and licensed in New York and post a valid surety. But it was like, okay, the appellate division... You're giving Donald Trump the benefit of the doubt. You're giving him an inch so he could basically take your life. But the only data that's occurred since the trial concluded and the order happened was that the key witness for the Trump organization, Weisselberg, pled guilty to a felony of perjury in this case. Like, why would you listen to anything they write when their key witness committed a felony perjury, uh, committed perjury and a felony in the case and admitted to it? I mean, just think about that. Well, now finally, New York Attorney General Letitia James is taking one of the kind of, I think, first steps here um, and requesting that Justice Ngoron modify his order in light of what Alan, what's transpired with Weisselberg's guilty plea. And specifically what New York Attorney General Letitia James did in sending this letter to uh, Justice Ngoron was that she requested that he do two things with his order as it relates to the independent monitor. First and foremost, that he um, give the independent monitor more teeth in the way she can communicate um, with the New York Attorney General's office and the parties in general on an ex parte basis, allow her to report kind of right away if she uncovers some fraud or misconduct. So add teeth to the order from a reporting standpoint, not just with the quarterly reports that she files. But the other thing that New York Attorney General Letitia James is requesting, and this could be the precursor, not just to something civil, but to some other criminal investigation against the Trump organization, is requesting that the independent monitor, remember her name? It's a retired federal judge, test you. Barbara Jones, good good memory if, if you got it right. Otherwise, you can pretend that you got it right. Um, retired federal judge Barbara Jones was a retired fed, was was a federal judge in the Southern District of New York, one of the most well respected judges. Um, she has been the in, the independent monitor since uh, in November 2022 injunction by Justice uh, Ngoron based on the ongoing and persistent fraud, systematic fraud by the Trump organization. She's allowed to, um, she's been given additional powers in the 92 page order where Trump was found liable for the $464 million to have more thorough investigations. But um, here, New York Attorney General Letitia James is saying, add to that a directive that this independent monitor specifically investigate if the Trump organization was covering up for Weisselberg's criminal conduct. They did not produce these records during discovery. Haba didn't and uh, the other lawyers representing Keiss. They never turned over these records that um, were uncovered during the proceeding themselves. So um, given that there was a crime that was committed 
order the independent monitor to gain access to all of their emails and to basically search the emails and ultimately determine if the Trump organization was involved in a criminal or civil cover-up for Alan Weisselberg, who's pled guilty to felony perjury. Can you please do that, Justice and Gore? That's the first step in potentially another action. That's how I read what's going on here. And New York Attorney General Letitia James is not letting up, which I like. I mean, you know, Justice and Goron still has jurisdiction over this matter. So you remember on the other issue where I did another video on it, did a few videos on it regarding the bond Trump used his buddy Don Hankey from uh, Knight Specialty Insurance, which didn't have the appropriate reserves to even be allowed to post sureties in the state of New York. It's being argued by New York Attorney General Letitia James, who filed an exception, which is like another way of saying an objection to the surety posted. So New York Attorney, Le New York Attorney General Letitia James is like, no, we're doing a hearing right now. We're we don't accept this surety. Set a hearing, Justice and Goron. Boom, Justice and Goron set a hearing for April 22nd. Here, same same day, New York Attorney General Letitia James says the following in this letter. Dear Justice and Goran, on behalf of the Office of Attorney General, we write regarding the monitorship order entered March 21st, 2024. Specifically, we write to ask for two modifications to the monitorship order. First, we ask that the monitorship order be amended to explicitly authorize the monitor to share information ex parte with any party. And second, we ask that the monitor be directed to investigate certain issues surrounding the recent perjury plea by defendant Alan Weisselberg. Boom. On the first issue, explicit authorization to share information on an ex parte basis, just like on her own without like a formal court hearing. This would merely conform the post-trial monitorship order to the pre-trial supplemental monitorship order entered on November 17, 2023. That earlier order provided that the, quote, monitor is authorized to engage in ex parte communications with the court and any party. While the monitorship order does not preclude such communications, we believe that out of an abundance of caution, the provision should be added. As to the second issue, on March 4th, 2024, Alan Weisselberg pleaded guilty to two counts of perjury in the first degree for false statements made during sworn depositions given before the Office of Attorney General in the investigation that preceded this very action. In addition, as part of the plea agreement with the Manhattan District Attorney's Office, Mr. Weisselberg also admitted to false statements made on October 10th, 2023, during the trial held in this matter. A copy of the Superior Court's information is attached as tab A. Among the evidence cited cited as proof that Mr. Weisselberg lied when he testified at trial, the criminal court complaint identifies an August 18, 2016 email between Mr. Weisselberg and a Trump Organization employee with the Trump Tower Declaration confirming the size of the Trump triplex apartment. And it goes on to show that portion. On August 18, 2016, just two days after the August 2016 Forbes email to Weisselberg questioning the triplex's size, Trump employee number two emailed Weisselberg the triplex First Amendment, which detailed its size at 10,996 square feet and the Trump Tower Declaration Schedule B. Mr. Weisselberg then asked another employee to verify the information. On or about August 18, 2016, Trump employee number three, a subordinate of Weisselberg, was asked to review the triplex First Amendment and Trump Tower Declaration Schedule B and to perform calculations to verify the accuracy of the information contained in the triplex First Amendment as it related to the size of Trump's triplex. Oh, Mr. Trump's triplex. OAG has undertaken review of the files produced by defendants by Trump and the Trump Organization in this investigation and has not been able to identify the reference communication. There's a footnote. In addition, paragraph 11 of the criminal court complaint refers to a March 3rd, 2016 email between Mr. Weisselberg and a managing director at Trump International Realty regarding the triplex. It also appears that the email with Mr. Weisselberg's response was not produced through a partial copy of a thread that was scanned by Jeffrey McConney and saved as as a backup for the statement of financial condition. We have already raised multiple times the prospect that defendant withheld relevant and responsive information from the Office of Attorney General. And then they cite the various briefs where they've raised this before. 
We therefore ask the monitor be tasked with reviewing the electronic files collected by defendants, including those collected for, produ for production to the District Attorney of New York to determine if the documents referenced in the criminal complaint were in the possession of the Trump Organization and if they were produced in either the underlying investigation or in the discovery in this action. And if they were not produced, the monitor be authorized to determine why they were not produced. We would further ask that the monitor be authorized to conduct this investigation and report back to the court and OAG within two weeks. We have attached a, a proposed modification order at tab B. In other words, let's not waste time. And what New York Attorney General Letitia James is doing right here is teeing this up for a potential another case against Donald Trump that potentially could be civil, and it may even have additional criminal ramifications. And New York Attorney General Letitia James is not messing around here. Now, you may be wondering, I thought this case is over. Now there's appeals. What's going on? Nope. Justice in Goron retains jurisdiction for many, many years while the independent monitor performs its function and New York Attorney General Letitia James can keep making filings without having to file new lawsuits as it relates to the monitor's role and responsibility. So we could be seeing more frequent requests of Justice in Goron who, I may add, Donald Trump's attacked his wife, Donald Trump's attacked his law clerk, Donald Trump's attacked his son. I'm Ben Micellis. This is the Midas Touch Network. Hit subscribe. Let's get to 3 million subscribers together. Have a wonderful day. Oh, have you seen Against All Enemies, the movie we executive produced? I think it's number five on all of Apple films, like out of all genres. Number one documentary in the world right now. Thanks to you, Midas Mighty. If you haven't seen it, watch it over the weekend or watch it during the week. It's called Against All Enemies. Watch it tonight, in fact. I think you'll really enjoy it. Um, it's harrowing, but it's important, and I think uh, they all did a really good job. I'm, I'm honored to be attached to it. It's called Against All Enemies. Thanks for watching, and let me know if you've seen Against All Enemies. Tell me what you think in the comments also. Have a good one. It's Ken Harbaugh with the Midas Touch Network. The film Against All Enemies, which I co-produced with Ben Micellis and this network, has won awards around the world for its up-close portrayal of America's insurrectionist movement. It premieres in the U.S. on March 29th on Amazon and Apple TV. Go to AgainstAllEnemiesFilm.com or click the link below. But don't just watch Against All Enemies. Tell your friends about it. It's one more way to hold accountable those who threaten our democracy. Thanks Midas Mighty, let's use our power well.